Well, we here at Good Morning Idaho love everything about our community, especially our local farmers. Yes, we do. And Brie Eggers is live this morning at one particular farm out near Meridian. Good morning, Brie. And we know you're alongside someone pretty special this morning. Yeah, I was going to say, good morning, guys. I, I am. I, I love farmers as well, particularly this one, Drew Eggers. And he invited me out to his mint farm today, but I also kind of forced him into it. But he likes talking about mint. And Dad, you were just telling me about the sheer number of, of mint farms around the state and acreage. What are we looking at? Well, the majority of the mint is raised in southwest Idaho. Uh, there's about 17,000 acres of mint produced in, in that region and uh, producing about 1.7 million pounds of oil annually. Uh, Idaho ranks number three in the nation for mint production behind Oregon number two and Washington state number one. The average yield uh, for Idaho is 95 to 100 pounds of mint oil per acre. See, and these are some things that I didn't even know, even though I grew up here, because what what am I, a third, fourth generation? Is that right? Yes, yes. So uh, your dad? Yeah, my dad started raising mint in 1968, and uh, uh, I came back to the farm in 1978, and we've been raising mint here ever since. So literally, my roots run quite deep here in the Treasure Valley. Let's take a look at your forecast for today. Hot temperatures, once again, we did make it into the 90s yesterday. 95 will be our high today. That smoke didn't suppress those temperatures too much, but maybe a degree or two. So imagine how hot it could have been if we didn't have that smoke hanging around. Hazy sunshine will be with us again today. Bus stop temperatures, just gorgeous. I don't even need a jacket out here, but you might need it in Caldwell or Nampa, where the temperature is closer to 60. And and taking a look at that southwest flow that's still bringing us the smoke in from the rim fire in California. We're also seeing cloud cover mainly in southeastern Idaho today, but there is enough moisture that's entering into the gym state to see a chance of thunderstorms this evening. Let's take a look at your day planner for today. We are seeing that red flag warning in effect for the east central mountains stretching all the way down to the eastern part of the magic valley 95 will be your high this afternoon but we will cool down a little bit and you see that hazy sunshine hanging around don't be surprised if an isolated storm moves its way through in the later parts of today it's more likely for the upper treasure valley than the lower treasure valley nevertheless a 30 percent chance of those isolated thunderstorms so we'll be watching closely for any new fire starts. For now, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio and we'll uh, talk about the farm a little bit more coming up. And it's pretty cool, Brie, because you've been showing us a lot of how things work there and where it ends up. So it sounds like you're learning things too. <laughs> yeah, I am. Even yeah. after four generations, there's still plenty to learn. Yeah, All right. you got, yep. Thanks, Brie. You're coming back in just a few minutes. All right, Brie. This time of year. Now, people have asked me, why is weather so important to me? I've always said it. It's hard to do it. I couldn't do it anywhere else. I love doing it here because I grew up on a, a farm, a mint farm, right here in the Gem State, in the Treasure Valley. And we're just off a of Black Cat Road this morning. This is Farmer Drew, agricultural specialist. And if he looks familiar, it's because we're twins. This is my dad. Well, tell me about the process here. We're going to start in the field with what you have in your hand. Yeah, mint is a perennial. It's a... Uh, we get four to five years out of a planting and it's planted uh, from a root stock, not from seed. And uh, most of the mint in uh, southern Idaho is raised, uh, is harvested once a year, distilled once a year during the month of August. Uh, the mint oil is in the leaf of the plant, not in the stem, but we have to bring both the leaf and, leaves and the stem into the distillery and steam out the oil that's in the leaf and separate it and uh, uh, just ship the mint oil off to market. But there's things that we can just do with the plant as well, like you have here. We, we do family mojitos every once in a while, right? Could you also boil it for tea? Yes, yeah, mints can uh, be used for a lot of different things, but commercially here on the farm, we distill the oil out to be used for flavorings in different products as gum and toothpaste and mouthwash and, and, and all the mint products that are, you can buy at the supermarket. So if you've ever asked yourself driving around the Treasure Valley, what's that smell? It's my dad. He's smelly. He smells good, though, like mint. So if you're driving to Boise along I-84 this morning, take a big whiff past Black Hat Overpass, and that's us. That's where we'll be. And we're going to cover more about how this crop gets from the field to the distillery and how it gets into your toothpaste. That's all coming up a little bit later. And for now, I'll send it back to you guys, Spencer, Rachel. All right. Thanks, Bri. A lot of stuff that mint is used for. I particularly like mint chocolate chip ice cream as well. Yes, <laughs> mint is a great thing. Thank you, Bri. I did not know that it was a root plant. 
not a seed. So I'm yeah. learning things all over the place. How this about morning. that? Yeah. More more stuff that we'll probably learn yeah. throughout the morning as well. We'll